Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 28th of July and it's 1.35 in the morning. Yep, I'm still awake, not tired, so I thought I'd put the camera on and uh, go through yesterday's car boot haul because I didn't go to Hoverton Bike Show, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so we'll have a look at all this car boot stuff, there's a mix of uh, torches, bike lights, die cast, some vintage electrical knickknacks, a couple of vintage torches up here actually. And I've also got, which I bought this on eBay, it's a big um, railway possession board. Right, and two of these items I've got are actually all the way from America. I didn't import them from America, I just found them on the car boot sale. So, we'll start with the, uh, the leeway, shall we, the leeway delivery bike. Um, it's not working at the moment, and it's my fault. It's not the bike's fault, it's my fault. I decided to play around with it, try and get a bit more oomph out of it, and effed it all up, basically. <laughs> Um, because you know, if you look up how to de-restrict a moped on YouTube, it tells you to either pull the pink wire out of the CDI plug, so you disconnect it or cut it, one or the other. I chose to pull it. So, if I wanted to put it back in and reconnect it, in theory, I should have been able to. Um, moped didn't like that being disconnected at all. It would not rev up and it flashed an error code at me because it's got an engine light on it but it doesn't stay on um, permanently when there's a problem like it would on a car it actually flashes a code at you when it detects something isn't right so I thought right well you know I should have put the wire back in <laughs> for some reason I didn't I pulled another wire out don't ask me why I don't know and then I forgot which way around those two wires went and once I'd got them back together I tried them in both orientations on the CDI unit nothing so I've got a feeling I may have fried the original CDI unit so I thought oh, well maybe I could get a racing CDI you know and upgrade it a bit maybe that'll give me a bit of a bit more oomph I didn't like that either. Um, or well, the second one. I bought one on eBay and I thought that's going to take too long to get here so I went and bought one on Amazon as well because these CDI units are cheap as chips. Um, so I actually went on Amazon and I just bought a couple of bog standard CDI units for Chinese bikes. It worked to a degree because um, I arrived yesterday, not yesterday, Friday and I put one on and I actually went round the block but the problem is as soon as I hit 30 mile an hour those revs would drop um, quite considerably then they would come back up again so I thought well that's not really a lot of good is it? <laughs> um, and I also had to replace the um, plug for the CDI unit I had to um, wire on a new one because where I pushed the wires out I just completely mushed up the bloody metal clips hadn't I the metal contacts so I had to do all that as well um, so yeah once I got back here from the first test ride I thought I'll double check all the other CDIs just to make sure you know I'm not getting any joy with them so you know I plug one in turn the ignition on start the bike rev it up on the spot and if they goes into that error code then I know it's no good and that's what it did on several of them I must have done that only two or three three times went to do it the fourth time ignition is totally dead nothing the um, trouble light as they call it or engine light should come on for a few seconds when you turn the key it's not even doing that now and everything else is just totally dead I should have hazard lights when I put the ignition on. Don't have those. Don't have nothing. 
diddly squat. So yeah, that's why I didn't go to the Hobbit Bike Show, because I had nothing to take. And I was that infuriated with it all, mostly at myself, because I just couldn't leave well enough alone. You know, if I, because this all started last weekend, if I'd have just left the frickin' thing alone, I'd still have a moped to ride around on. Which would be better than what I've now got, which is absolutely nothing. So yeah, I was not happy, so I just contacted my mum and said, did you all go to the Isles from Carboot? So we did. <laughs> She came and picked me up and, yeah, ended up with a load of stuff. <laughs> um, I was just watching Smudge. <laughs> he looks so cute when he's laying on the floor. Look at him. <laughs> Snow is on the bed, I think. She's going to get booted off the bed. Well, actually, she never gets booted off the bed. She gets off voluntarily. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to do anything with it tomorrow. I'll have a look at it during the week. And just take a break from it and whatnot. Right. First item I'm going to show you is actually what I bought on eBay. I've actually been after one of these for a few years now, but every time one came up on eBay, I either didn't have the cash there, um, or they were selling for silly money. But this one, I, I literally just happened to cross when I had 30 minutes left, um, and one bid. So I stuck a cheeky bid in and won it for not a lot of money, actually. 30 odd quid. I've seen them sell for more than that. So there it is, it's a little uh, stop board for the railways, and a red light on the top, I believe it's a doorman, and to power them you just have a battery box like this, yeah, it is a doorman, Ooh, that goes to bolt. so I might need my flat screwdriver, I can power it up. had a battery here specifically for this. I kept it to one side. Oh, here it is, down by my feet. Put it in there like that. Close the lid. Oop, that. Then this side. This is just the same as the Dorman Mark II board I've got hanging up in the hallway. Just, I've just used a kettle lead. We come back here. Battery box is a bit finicky, just like my other one. There we go, it works. They look like they can do with a bit of a clean, though. So, I'm going to give that a clean when I've got a minute. Right, I'll bring you back to me now. Um, do the die cast last. Uh, one thing I did pick up for a couple of pounds, a six-way one of these with a nice uh, switch on the bottom, top, rather. Always handy to have, and I know a friend of mine is in need of one as well. This came out of Lidl's originally because it's got power fix written on it. That's a little brand. Well, I've got other spares because he's going to move all this computer and everything around in his flat, so. Right. The phone is down here for some reason, I have no idea why. So, in this bag, apart from two items, I paid a fiver for the lot. So the two items I, that didn't come with this bag of crap, basically, is one of these old-fashioned light switches. 
and got itchy nose and eyeball. Apparently everything's deciding to itch. I've, that's my fourth one. I've got two Bakelite brown ones and I've got one which has got the Bakelite cover with a ceramic back. And now I've got a white one. I love these old switches. And here's the other thing that I got. <laughs> How many people watching actually knows what this was for? So I'm going to need that as well. I'm going to need a light bulb. So, back in the days, I think around the 1930s, if memory served correctly, um, it wasn't common for houses to have sockets installed unless you were wealthy. The wealthy houses had them. But if you're a pauper, you didn't. You just had an electric light in each room. And that was it. So what they used to do is make little adapters. Like these. So this would plug into your light socket in the middle of your room. Use this funky light bulb that I got at the car boot as well. Look at that. You then put your light bulb in there like that. And then, say you've got an electric iron or something, you have your electric iron wired to that and you plug it in there. And so you power your iron. Now it's got a switch on here, but I don't know if it's actually for this or for that. Because this is the second one I've got. Although the other one's got like Bakelite lamp holders, not these metal ringed ones. Yeah, I'm not sure what that, I'm going to have to power wire these up to find out what the switch does, I think. And yes, I have seen people on Facebook, because I'm on a Facebook group for vintage mains, plugs and electrical curiosities. Great group for stuff like this. But I have seen it when I've got these and then gone like that and put a bulb in there as well. I suppose if you want some extra light in your house back then, you could have done that and you could have probably plugged a load of these together till you blew your fuse. No idea what Smudge is doing. I don't think he knows either. So, I actually paid a pound for both of these. The stupid thing is that if you go on eBay, stuff like this would actually cost you more than that. You can get it cheap as anything on car boots. Just people just want to get rid of stuff or they just don't realise what it is. Anywho, I'm not going to go through everything in this bag because a lot of it is just a bunch of toot, basically. But like I said, I paid £5 for it, so there's only a handful of items there that I really was interested in. So I've got four of these little light socket plugs, bayonet plugs. Two of these in the brown colour, black colour. One in the white. That one, which is like a wood effect. Oh, he's playing with a sponge. That's why he's chasing around the floor. Yeah, I've actually got quite a few of these. Well, I say quite a few. I've probably got like half a dozen now. Um... I've got this unusual plug adapter. So you've got your standard three pin plug there to plug into your socket. And plug into the wall because back then you only had a single socket. And you might have been lucky to have one of those in each room. <laughs> so if you did need extra you'd have to have bought one of these. I don't know why it's triangular shape but it is. And it's fused. This is meant to be 13 amp max, and I'm pretty certain that's not a 13 amp fuse in there. Um, but you've got your two, for your three square pins there, then you've got a round pin up the top there. Because I have got a bunch of these round pin plugs. Because back in the day, a lot of lamps had these things. Because there wasn't much of a standard believe it or not, at one point in the UK. It's just 
just a this, that, and the other, you know. I mean, look at the size of that one. That's a 15 amp plug. So you'd use that on something like um, a fridge, maybe, if you were lucky enough to have an electric fridge or a washer. Again, if you're lucky enough to have an electric clothes washer, washing machine. And then you use these smaller ones for the lamps. I think I've got like three of these in here. Oh, and I've got that tiny little one. <laughs> then, for your round pin plugs, you've got this adapter. So you can turn a single round pin socket into two. You've got one at the top there for two different sizes. Also got a nice MK plug with a switch on the top. That's the second one of these I now have. And then this peculiar device. Still not actually hundred percent certain on what it is. Um, but it looks like it's some sort of adapter to go from your three square pin to your three round pin and a small plug. I've got a smaller screw that I did try earlier but I didn't have a small enough screwdriver so we'll have a little look shall we. I'm just curious. <laughs> Rubberized. No, I can't actually get that out of there. The wires are too short. That's a bit of a bummer as well because uh, I actually can't open it up to check it on the inside to make sure it is okay to plug in. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think I'd want to plug that in. Someone's had a go at levering. Oh, I think it's actually glued on there. Screwed on there, I don't know. Like I said, I can't get into it to have a look. That's probably the most unusual item in that lot. Great. We've got a lot of lights next. A lot of lights. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> sort of yodeled for a second there, didn't I? Badly, but... Yep. Not messaged on Discord. <laughs> Message will have to wait a minute. So... Found another Pifco motoring torch and for some reason I screw this all the way down and the switch goes out of alignment. Yep, that works, don't works, they both work. Now I've got that with this gold coloured body with a red dome, in fact I might have two of them. Um, but I can have one with a clear dome, so it's not in bad shape either. could do with a bit of a clean up, but it's not in too bad shape. Um, now this was still sealed in its packet, which was, was actually now brand new sealed in box bicycle light from like the late 1990s, early 2000s, because I actually had one of these made by Woolworths. You've got the um, switch unit there, you can turn it on and off, and then you've got your left and right indicator. And then, you're supposed to have a brake light. Yeah. Well, I couldn't actually get that to do anything, and I'm pretty certain the fault was with this, because look, got a bit mangled up. I don't know if that happened when I put this on the bracket or took it off. Now there was two AA batteries still in this from the factory. 
because the package had like a try me feature on it. So they were long dead, but you know, considering this has been in a packet for 20 plus years, the batteries suffered very little, very, very, very little in the way of leakage. Let me just grab them. They were GP branded, which um, Wool was used quite a lot in their bicycle lights. But literally for leakage, got a tiny little spot on the bottom of that one. We've got that on that end, and that on that end, that's it. There's nothing inside the light that looks like it's got um, got damaged by any leakage, so it was actually very clean inside the battery pack. Which surprised me, actually. Uh, that was only a couple of quid. Then I got these 50p each. Bike hat lights. I actually had one of these years ago, but it was on a bike that got stolen. It does work. Those are the batteries. It came with batteries, this one. I've got the flash, and then off. Now, bike hat cheated, because there's the front light. On, flash, off. And it's the exact same flash pattern. So they've literally just used the same chip in both lights. And unusually, when you look at this, you see the LED is actually on the front of this lens and it's pointing inwards towards the reflector. And you have to say, it's not a bad light. <laughs> so that's, a, that's an unusual way to do it. I've seen them wear bike lights, especially the ones from Lidl's. I've got the LED in the top and sort of pointing down and slightly at the reflector. Um, Which looks like it's got some scratches on the LED. <laughs> Three AA batteries. Couldn't see any markings whatsoever in there to tell me which way the batteries went, so I just had to keep turning them around until I got them right. Which is a bit annoying. So I must remember to just take note of the battery orientation when I change these before I dump them out everywhere. Although I can guarantee I'm going to forget that and still end up dumping them everywhere. Right, now onto some real vintage stuff. Likewise, anyway. Two items. I've got a French torch. Sometimes these get advertised as bike lights on eBay, but I really don't think they are. It's uh, made by Varta and made in France. Batteries are obsolete. I don't know if anybody will re remember the 4.5 volt batteries. Sort of about yay big by yay big, and had the two little prongs on the top. That's what this takes. Now, you can get adapters that look like the battery, basically, battery shape and everything, but it's got um, the ability to put like three double A's, I think it is, in it. Or the other thing you could do, I could just go on eBay, buy a um, battery pack that takes three double A's and just fit that in here. So that's what I'm going to do and see if we can get this fired up. I mean, it's very clean in there. A thing there to hang it up. Excuse me. Now, my favourite of the day is this. Um, now, the guy I got it from, he's there pretty much every week at Elsham Carbo. It has been for years. Um, he told me it was a miner's lamp, an old miner's lamp. Um, it's got made in USA on the handle. The handle itself slides up. You've got a belt clip there on the battery box. The switch is up here. And you've got your lamp. Um, now I'm just going to try and open the battery pack. That 
that's inside the battery pack. And as you can see, this bloody light just falls off. You've got all that wire coiled up in there. I'm assuming what a miner would have done is this would have gone on the helmet up there. Then they would have fed that cable around and probably down to their side and had the battery box switch on their belts. Uh, I can demonstrate this They're working. You do have to wiggle the batteries a bit to get you know any sort of brightness out of it, but it does work. Have I put these in the right way round or? Battery contacts are all going to need a good clean, but I've lost it now, haven't I? No, it's going very dim. <laughs> yeah, it does work. That bulb actually looks fairly new. There is no glass in here anymore. That's That probably fell out years ago. I don't know why I say my F's like that. That annoys me. Well, actually, these JCBs aren't 100% either. And someone's cleaned this with paraffin because it absolutely stinks of paraffin. Or kerosene, if you're in America. I believe that's what Americans uh, would call it. Yeah, I bet this lamp was a pain in the ass for falling off of that. But when you do that, you've basically got a hand lamp as well. It's, like a, it's an early multifunction lamp. I have no idea the age. But I did look up just right on Google and they still exist as an American company because the site I was on was American. I knew that without actually looking at the um, address because I had um, a safety cabinet there to put chemicals and things in. It was measured in gallons. <laughs> it was a 45 gallon cabinet. I was like, yep, that's American. <laughs> Don't know many other places that would uh, use... Um, the old measurements like that. So, yeah, they actually make various safety products. Or at least they do these days. I'm assuming it's the same company. Exactly the same spelling. They do make various safety products for chemicals and things. So, yeah, it might be the same company. But, uh... I really do like that lamp. I'm actually going to post that. I know it's not a barricade lamp, but I'm going to post it on um, the barricade lamp groups. So I know there's some uh, American collectors on there, especially on the American-based barricade lamp group. Um, they might be able to uh, shed some light on it. Sorry, that was a bad joke. It is nearly two o'clock in the morning though, if not gone two o'clock, gone two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Best I can do at this time in the morning. Right then, I'm going to show you the other uh, American item. If that is an American, I don't know if our miners over here actually use the same lamps, that might be why it's here. You know, it might be from the old coal mines, I don't know. Maybe someone brought it over from the States with them one year, many years ago, I have no idea. Anywho, the other item is this. An actual US license plate from California. Now I can only guess that the reason this is here is that someone at some point imported a car from California and of course can't use these plates when you register the car over here you have to have UK plates on it so I'm guessing they swap the plates and then this just either got lost or left somewhere and ended up on a car boot I don't know if that's the dealership name that's written on there which has almost disappeared actually it's Jim even under this I was having trouble reading it because it's just it's not clear
Causley, I think that's, that would be my best guess, C-A-U-S-L-E-Y, Causley, Jim Causley, so I don't know if that's like the owner, because I believe that that's the license pl the plate itself, and then this is the uh, license plate holder, so maybe that was a personalised holder that belonged to someone, what's their name on it? There is no tags on it though. Someone's cleaned the uh, tags up. See? Do you all know that? I know that's where your tags go, which is America's version of our road tax, I suppose. A little bit bent, but. And it is reflective. I didn't know that American number plates were actually reflective, but this is reflective. I wonder how old it is. Curious now. Actually, I've got a photo of this and that miner's lamp together, so I might just post both that photo on the. Uh, oh, when I can get me words out, I'll probably post that photo on the groups. Right. Let's crack on, shall we? Uh, just bear with me two seconds. Pinged on Discord. Oh, I see. I sent a script that someone was working on. So I could have a read. Right. So I've got quite a lot here. There's Dinky Corgi Majorette Matchbox. Um, most of it did come from the diecast guy. I tried to say about half of this came from the diecast guy and half of it didn't. <laughs> um, hello. <laughs> well, it's going to be quiet like, well, actually, you've been quiet most of the evening. I was going to say, was well, it going to be quiet like your sister is? But, yeah, as he's been laying in his um, bed on the cat tree. He seems to like that more than Snowy does. Snowy prefers the uh, bed. But every time I go to bed, she hops off and comes through here and actually sleeps on this chair. So we just basically swap. This is mine during the day when I'm at the PC and then when I go to bed she hops off and comes in here. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at uh, what we've got here. I'm going to go through the stuff I got on other stalls first. So I've got this boxed. Uh, transit van with uh, Heinz on it, or Beans Means Heinz. I remember that slogan. They ran that slogan for years. <laughs> Beans Means Heinz. According to the back, um, it's one of a range of promotional models made exclusively by Lido PLC to special order. So I suppose companies like Heinz could, you know, trying to get under there. Anyway, companies like Heinz could probably order a batch, you know, to give away or something. I don't like the wheels that Lido used on these, but, but um, I do like the van itself. I've got a few from them. I haven't got a box to put any of these in. I've run out of boxes. I should get some of these other ones uh, sorted out so I can get them emptied. Right. What else did I get? I've got a little Corgi Police helicopter. Because I've got the rest of the set. I've got the Jaguar Police car. I've got the transport truck. I've got the van. I didn't have the helicopter. <laughs> In fact, I've got probably my third police car with that particular livery on. Mainly because I just want the light bars because I might just steal it for another project. Stick it on something else. Um, I've, got, I've got quite a few Hot Wheels today as well. Got the uh, Plymouth Roadrunner in the Hot Wheels blue and Hot Wheels on it. 
and I actually quite like those wheels. Then we've got this uh, GMC motorhome with eight news on it. I suppose if I wanted to, I could drill the rivet one day and uh, paint it a plain colour. Because I actually don't like the eight news on it. Uh, then we've got the Nissan 240Z. So even without my glasses, I can read the bases of these cars. It just depends on the base and if it's in good enough condition and how it's reflecting the light. Some Hot Wheels cars have the nice shiny base and they're an absolute bugger to read. I hate those. Um, I actually can't remember if I got this out of the Diecast Guys 50p box or not, but this is a Maisto. I know Matchbox did a few of these as well. It's a nice little Maisto. I don't know why, I think I might have just been trying to make up for the pound because they were 50p each. I've got two of these. They're in good condition. Oh, I thought so. One of them is a slightly lighter shade of orange than the other. We've got a little Majorette trailer with Elf on it. Elf competition. I've probably got a truck somewhere in my box of Majorette that, that will uh, go to. Let's have a look at some more Hot Wheels. We've got a 55 Chevy. Now I've got Camaro. A very nice shade of blue, actually. And I think, if I remember rightly, it's a 64 Lincoln Continental. I didn't know they did variations of this um, casting because I've got the um, jet black one, the red interior. Well, I haven't got this one. I didn't have this one, I should say. And we've got Corgi Land Rover, missing missing the top. <laughs> missing the canopy. I actually nearly said it again. I think it might be for the far service just because of that yellow stripe, it's red and got chevrons on the back. If that was a little bit smaller, that would actually be good for the uh, model railway. It's just a bit too big. Matchbox. Pontiac Farber. I like the colour of that, just not the wheels. I'm tempted to change the wheels on it. Corgi Lotus Esprit. couple of majorettes and got this one in blue got it in orange I've got the um, fire truck version of it I've got a few of them actually but not the blue one um, oh another Hot Wheels here got a little truck I don't know what the truck is though a mini truck of some sort oh it's a ranchero Ford Ranchero 60 really Back to the 60s. Just chewing on plastic and I hate the sound that makes. It drives me up the wall. Right. Corgi Buick Regal. I love these castings. I cannot resist buying one when I see them at the car boots. Um, another Maisto car here. It's a Porsche. I can remember that. But all the other ones I got are utter crap. <laughs> so I had to have that when I saw it. I was like, ooh, one that's actually in mint condition. And another one which is Maisto as well. But I know, I'm pretty certain Chad Valley did this as well back in the day. The Chevrolet Chevy Caprice. In very nice condition as well. Just what I got from various other stalls. Not a great deal, actually. Um, now, from the diecast guy. Oh, actually, I'm telling fibs. I've got one more. Got that from a different stall as well. I have got the DAF transports. This one's 
as you can see it's got the removable tyres. You're deliberately trying to pee me off now, aren't you? Because I'm just chewing on that. Um, it has got a little bit of a break either side here, just by the hydraulics. I have got tyres I can put on this. Um, but yes, yeah, the only one I've got. I've been looking for this particular one for a while. It was only two quid, so I'm not really bothered. I mean, this hasn't broke, broke, it hasn't snapped in half. So I'm hoping I can just squeeze a little bit of super glue in there and then put a little bit of pressure up on this just to nip the joint closed. And that should hold it. And this hydraulic ram has just fell off. I think the rivet might be a bit. Yeah. I can't really super glue it in, can I? Because then it won't pivot. <laughs> I need to get the. Uh, I need to find my box of spare tyres now for that. One. Right. Now the rest is from um, the diecast guys. I'm going to start with the small stuff first. So I've got. A, I actually bought this, and I think I've actually got it. A little uh, estate car. I don't remember what it is though. It was made by Husky. There's absolutely no way on this planet I'm going to read that. It's a Ford Zephyr, I thought it was. Because I know um, I've got a um, Lone Star Impy version of it. I just uh, couldn't remember what it was. Uh, Ford Capri in green. With the uh, blown engine sticking out of it. Now I got that one because... Over here... I've got a mint orange one. And I've also got a purple one from Matchbox, but it doesn't have to blow an engine. It's got the uh, just a normal engine with a, a bonnet that should open, but the bonnet broke, so I've actually glued it in place, unfortunately. So yeah, that's why I got the uh, green one, because I thought, you know, might as well have the colour variations as I come across them. I don't actually know why that orange one is sitting there. That, that one actually has a box for it. Uh, then we've got this little Siku Volkswagen Golf Mark 1 convertible. And Skoda. I tell you what, you look these ones up on eBay and then look at the prices people are asking. Well, last time I looked, the prices of these were insane. And I don't know why. I mean, the paintwork on this is absolutely mint. Um, the sun has got to the base a little bit and sort of tanned it, but other than that, it's in very good conditions. Way better than both of the other ones I've got. But I've seen people put scruffy ones up on eBay and they're asking insane amounts for them. It's nuts. And I've got Range Rover Police. I just realised the taillights are painted. I don't know if Corgi did that or if someone else has done it. I just like the uh, orange police stripe on it. Which looks factory to me. It doesn't look like someone's done that. I know they came with a police stripe on them. And another Rover SD1 because it's another one I can't resist. Right, that's all small stuff. Got this one with the tractors. And there's the cab. I've got quite a few of these blue tractors, but I've noticed the ones on this trailer are a lighter blue than the ones I've got on the shelf in the bedroom. Um, and of course, the bloody tyres have all fallen off of the rims, so I've got to glue those on. If I don't glue them on, they're just going to annoy the frick out of me. Um, got a few dinkies. We've got this one, which is Cunningham uh, C-5R, I think, or SR. I can't quite make it out. Again, it's not a very clear base on that one. The diecast guy said that one's been repainted, not by him, but someone has. I don't know, it looks 
well if it has it's been done really well that still looks nice so lovely little dinky We've got a Rolls-Royce dinky here, which has got some yellow paint or something around those windows. They're the only windows it's around, though. When I first picked it up, I thought, ah, someone's repainted it. But then again, you wouldn't have a bright yellow Rolls-Royce, would you? Have you ever seen one? Is that a silver wraith? Yeah. Made in England, Meccano Limited. It's showing its age, but it's not in bad shape. You know, considering its age, probably in better shape than I am. What else have we got? Uh, a little dinky tow truck. It's the second one of these I've got. The other one's in different colours. He's got two more of these as well. One's missing the hook. I'm not sure about the other one. I didn't really look. But I didn't like the colour schemes of the other one, so I grabbed that one because I liked it. Dinky services. We've got this little Austin van, that's all it says on the bottom is Austin. <laughs> well, I did say at the beginning of the year I wanted to add Dinky to my diecast collection. I've actually added quite a few <laughs> this year. A lot more than I thought I was going to add because I barely you know, find anything. I've now got uh, two of these and I've bought both because I've got different tyres on. One's going to be a later version than the other. I don't know which is which though. I've got a feeling the one with the black tyres is going to be later than that one. With the grey tyres. Unfortunately. That one's got a little bit of cracking in it. And that one's the worst out of the four tyres in this one. In fact, that one looks like a different tyre. <laughs> I think that one's been replaced. I think it's a different shade of grey, so that one's not an original tyre on that one. But, if I displayed it that way, you ain't going to see it, are you? So, I don't mind that. Oh, actually, that tyre is a different shade as well. The problem with these old tyres, they dry out as they age. And then this happens, because when I got back to Mum's after the car boot, Notice this tyre had fallen off, so I just went to push it on and it split. Because it's just, it's dried out too much. But I think I could put a dab of super glue behind, um, into that and just pinch it shut. I don't know if it'll hold, it might spring open again, but it's worth a try, isn't it? Let's see with a dab of super glue. Uh, I think that is all the dinkies. No, it isn't. But one more. I've got a, another one of these because it's actually cleaner and tidier than my other one, which is yeah. Not by that much though. Although the police sign is in better condition on the roof. Um, but this has actually got the police accident sign in the back. It is missing everything else, but the sign's there and a cracked window. Um, now what I could do is take the screw out and drill the rivet that's holding that windshield in and swap them with this one. But then I've also realised this one's got the rear window on the door. It's missing on that one. <laughs> I'm going to see if I might find another sort of scruffy one that might have a, a good window in. Scruffier than these two. I do like these vans so I don't really care that I've got two of them. I do like them. In fact, I've got five, I think, now. I've got another two over on the window ledge. I think I've got another yellow one. I think. Anyway, next up, Massey Ferguson tractor, just because I liked it. It's playable. I put a lever on there and then to tip the bucket you just go you just go <laughs> didn't want to release it it's well made I don't know who made it though there is no maker on it it's a little Massey Ferguson I know that um, 
As far as to who makes the toy, I have no idea. It's a nice little toy, though. I'm happy as Larry if I was a kid and had this to play with out in the garden. And what else we got? We've got a Dennis fire engine from Lido. I'm missing the ladder, but the rest of it is in good condition. And we've got a Jaguar Mark 10. I'm sure I've actually got this in a different colour. And I'm sure I've got that one in a different colour as well. Actually, no, I haven't got that one in a different colour. But the Mark 10, I'm pretty certain I have in a different colour. Or I might have this one, though. 2.4 Lydia. I might have this one in a different colour. Uh, I think the rest are all corgis now, the last four. We've got that. I can't turn it upside down because the bonnet will fall off. But it looks like it's designed to, because if you look there, underneath my middle finger, there's a notch where the hinge would be, and it looks like it's actually in there deliberately. So you can take the bonnet off. So I'm surprised the said bonnet is still with it. But yeah, that does not look like someone's put that in there. That's been put in by the factory. For what purpose? I don't know. What is it? ISO Griffo 7 Lear. Not a clue. Then got Chevy Corvair. I've got an American friend on Facebook that absolutely loves the Corvair. He's just done a lovely restoration on one. We've got an Austin A80 from Corgi with the wheels that steer. We've got both the instructor and the student in there because it is the learner. I know the diecast guy had a couple of these recently, but I don't know if he's still. He was going to keep one to put in his cabinet, but I don't know if he kept it or if you decided to sell it in the end. He's had this one for a few weeks and I just thought, you know what, I think that would be a little nice addition to the collection. So I grabbed it and I've got this Peugeot, it's the paint core isn't it on this one, 505 STI. Pretty good condition as well, actually. Gotta love these old Peugeots. Right, that is it, that's everything. So, uh, I'm quite happy with this haul. Um, a heck of a lot of wood to bring back from the workshop because mum's having another kitchen put in so I salvaged a load of boards from the old cabinets including two little cabinets as well I was going to put underneath the uh, Lego City table when I've got that built and I was going to put shelves in it as well and for a bit of storage um, I'll probably add a couple of shelves to what I've got here as well cut them to size and whatnot, and put them in there, increase um, some display space, and eventually, once these are all boarded up, I'll put some shelving up there as well. <coughs> so, the shelves on either side of the lounge there will remain Lego shelves, and then die cast will go up behind me here. I've got fire engines, I've got barricade lamps, Five Nights at Freddy's plushies up there, some Transformers, a Funko Pop right at the top. Oh, okay, now I'm getting tired. <laughs> yes, I'm going to get me time to shut down the PC. No, 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 no. No time in his crap. But he was such an adorable face. 
which you have. So full of, I would say he's full of fur, but you do, he's a cat. <laughs> he would be. Unless it's a sphinx cat. And they're hairless. What do you cats? I always want cuddles at stupid o'clock in the morning. I want to go to bed now. All you want to do is sit on my lap and have cuddles. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to give you cuddles. Bonus, well, I would say cat footage. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I can't reach the camera to move it. I guarantee if I move too much, he's going to jump off. Can I just roll my chair forwards a little bit? Just, uh. just to drop the camera a bit. There we go. There he is. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on. No? Yeah, I heard that over there as well. I don't know what it was. Could be anything. Probably the resident ghost moving things about. Yeah, and again. I'm going to double move the camera that way a bit. <sighs> right. It's time to shut the camera down then. You can say bye bye to YouTube? No? Well, I'm going to turn you back on YouTube instead. Okay. <laughs> All right then. That's better. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. As always, please hit the like button if you like the video. If you didn't, then hit the dislike button. Um, and of course, consider subscribing. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, a little bit of grit in my eye. Hang on. And in the video description, you know, I always put links in there to my other two YouTube channels and um, my Discord server and uh, my Twitch channel. I haven't done much with the Twitch channel recently. It's not been in the mindset, but I do want to make use of it. I don't want it to be a dead piece of uh, social media. Anyway, as I was saying, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.